just give us an idea of the extent of the problem. I think the problem is really uh, it's uh, both large and unfortunately it's uh, growing very rapidly. So uh, now we're talking about, uh, you know, maybe something like 270 million people facing uh, acute uh, uh, problems with uh, hunger. And mostly these are people who are uh, facing this because the uh, limitations on um, their movement brought about by uh, COVID. Uh, COVID has uh, led to uh, a certain desperation amongst uh, people. Uh, and unfortunately, it's led to a lot of violence. And so in many of these communities now, you have both people on the move as they're trying to uh, uh, escape from the uh, violence, and that's added to their, uh, uh, to their uh, food insecurity. And so uh, now we literally have hundreds of uh, millions of people uh, that are facing acute hunger. So what is a prescription? What can be done to actually alleviate this uh, possible famine? Well, I think there are a, uh, a number of things, and it's important to understand that when we talk about hunger, we're actually talking about uh, several different degrees. There's the immediate issue of famine and literally uh, trying to make sure that people don't starve to death. Uh, in order to alleviate that, uh, we basically need two things. We need money put into the hands of these people so that they can buy food, and we need to make sure that food is actually available for them to buy. Uh, to make sure that food is available, we need to be uh, sure that, uh, uh, that there's uh, uh, trade, both the uh, domestic trade, but also many of these countries need to uh, import uh, food. Uh, governments are uh, releasing food from their stocks, but those stocks are uh, depleting. Uh, they need to be uh, replenished, and so international trade has to uh, recover. And then at the same time, we need to be sure that there are safety nets that are providing the cash to families and households so that they can buy it. And uh, more or less, uh, I think that there are uh, uh, appeals just now from the United Nations for about $9 billion worth of food aid for that kind of emergency, real acute hunger. But I, 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 I think that it's really important that we not think that that's the only source of hunger. And COVID is happening mm. on top of a really significant degree of severe food insecurity. People who literally have been uh, unable to uh, have enough to eat at some point, uh, who are constantly worried about whether they can feed their families. And there we're talking about another seven to 800 million people. Uh, and this was true before COVID. It's worsened uh, with uh, COVID as uh, rural incomes have uh, fallen. Uh, and that's an additional layer. So when we look to the response and when people talk about building back better and recoveries from COVID, it's really important that they address that second source of hunger as well as just the emergency. Your chief executive has also talked about the stark contrast, which we already know, homie, between the rich and the poor, some 2,000 billionaires with a combined wealth of around 8 trillion. And as you say, you're looking for 9 billion here. You'd think that would almost be pretty simple maths. But what can the everyday person do as well? I understand you've also got an app to help share the meal. Well, I think that ultimately it uh, really just does uh, depend on people recognizing that this is a uh, human crisis uh, and uh, people understanding that there are uh, so many people around the world who are in uh, 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 desperate straits. Uh, you know, when we think about the, uh, uh, the hunger as uh, only as famine, it, uh, it narrows it to the concept that this is just an issue maybe for a few, a few African countries, uh, maybe the Yemen and uh, Syria and uh, places like that. But when we take the uh, somewhat broader view of hunger that I was describing uh, before, then we realize that hunger is actually uh, 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 present in many, many more countries across the world and even exists in many developed countries. So building up that concept of solidarity 
towards hunger, both in one's own country and then abroad, I think is going to be part and parcel of a, uh, uh, a much more generous global humanitarian effort that's required. And this threat of famine looming more globally as you're talking about, is that in your view perhaps going to be our biggest crisis and, and surpass the coronavirus pandemic? Well, it's certainly affecting, um, you know, as many people right now. So, uh, you know, we're probably talking about uh, maybe uh, 70 million people who are being driven into hunger just because of conflict across, uh, you know, 20 plus countries. Uh, so this is really uh, uh, quite pervasive. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with 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 a famine like this, it's uh, one of those things where it's very difficult to recover from. I mean, the coronavirus, uh, uh, you know, most people thankfully uh, do uh, uh, do recover from it. Uh, but when you have a famine on this uh, scale, then uh, you know more the, the the threat of uh, uh, people actually dying from uh, hunger uh, goes up quite substantially, and uh, obviously that's something that we have to uh, uh, really worry about. And that's going to be, you know, that's going to be there not just for these famine conditions, but again for the. Um, uh, uh, for the uh, longer term issues of food insecurity. People talk about uh, uh, malnutrition, for I mean, example. People talk about stunting as the silent killer. That's what we have to avoid. I mean, I get your point about uh, the difference between a famine and, of course, hunger here as well. But, I'm, you know, our political systems not just coronavirus, but they probably make things work. Aren't political systems actually to blame uh, here as well? I mean, there's an oft-quoted uh, maxim that there's never been a famine in a democracy. Does that hold true? Uh, well, I don't think that that's uh, uh, strictly uh, true. Uh, we did have a uh, great famine in uh, Bengal, for example, uh, uh, at uh, one point in time. Uh, even though it was before India uh, did uh, uh, gain its uh, independence. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not really just a matter of governance, although, as I said, conflict is one of the big drivers right now uh, of uh, uh, food insecurity. Uh, this is also just a basic issue of uh, income levels and people's ability to afford uh, safe and nutritious uh, food. And that's a function of economic policies of a, uh, uh, a number of different kinds of uh, policies. And that's something that we absolutely can do something about and should do something about.